Here we have the electric pyramid where I store and make my electricity. I make it with a two-stroke Chinese air-cooled electric generator and here is a bottle of collected used two-stroke oil. Beside that is a bottle of collected condensed used two-stroke oil. They are different viscosities and they're collected in different ways from the engine powering the generator that's in the pyramid as a backup for the days when there's not enough sun to fill the batteries with solar electricity. Here we see the exhaust duct which receives expired cooling air and in the centre of the expired cooling air the hot exhaust is blown. It's blown into the centre of a heat exchanger condenser matrix so that the cold or relatively cold compared to the hot exhaust gas the relatively cold used cooling air takes the heat out of the aluminium matrix and therefore the exhaust gas is cooled and that precipitates the unburnt, unused oil into droplets that condense and gravity plus airflow causes them to fall out the bottom. Here we see a drip tray which I have fitted underneath the exhaust canister and the oil which drips from the bottom of the canister drains into a collecting measuring cup with an overflow container. And the reason that this engine is such an oily little critter is because the cooling fan runs at 3000 RPM crankshaft speed which has to deliver enough air for full electrical output because 3000 RPM gives 50 cycles per second and that's how many sine waves have to come out of the alternator at the end of it. Therefore thus and because this exhaust canister is in a cooling air blast that may be <clears throat> six or seven hundred percent more than is required to cool the cylinder. So down here where there's a heat shield which acts as a uh, heat sink, the engine's exhaust pipe is hypercooled unless the engine is running at full throttle. So the exhaust canister fills up with condensed oil which drops out the bottom. This was annoying enough that I uh, fitted a drip tray and started to collect it and then I thought about all the rest of the oil that was coming out in the exhaust gas flow. Now this is the view as seen by the airflow and the hot exhaust goes into the centre of the matrix and the cold air goes around it so that sucks the heat out of the metal that's in contact with the hot exhaust. And down here we have the view from the other end. When I first got the generator I was pretty happy with it. It was actually a replacement for a faulty unit on warranty so I was pretty happy with that too. I liked the generator enough, thought enough about it, that I actually cobbled up a bit of a logbook, did a bit of an analysis on the thing. By the time it had run 300 hours, I had measured its specific fuel consumption under various different load conditions, and I would charted its airflow. The first attempt at a uh, heat exchanger condenser was so crude that it doesn't survive at all in any way, shape or form. This is the second one. The third one is sitting here. It wasn't actually a success. 
sorry, the fourth one. This is the fourth one. The third one is the one that's in use at the moment. But this is what the second effort looked like when it went into service. And here's the collecting end of the second effort. Which looked like this from the front. And like that from the back. And this fit inside the simple shroud that previously had conducted the mixture outside the pyramid. Here's the third prototype, which is the one that's in service at the moment, beside the used second prototype. The view up the tail cone, that's stainless steel wool bought at the supermarket for dishwashing, cleaning. And here's the third prototype after it's seen, I don't know, 50 hours use I suppose. When I gave it a larger and more serious shroud, I also went from having a single wire cotter pin in order to retain the steel wool, to having quite a serious array of these wire cotter pins in order to precipitate more droplets of condensed oil. Here's the front view with the new larger shroud. And for the exhaust end I came up with yet another heat exchanger condenser. So we see it beside the third version with the narrow cord ring. Third version deep cord ring with the exhaust trailing edge condenser. We've gone from that to that which fits inside the original shroud in an attempt to suck more heat out of the hot exhaust gas flow and therefore precipitate more condensed oil. This idea of having lots and lots of wire at the end of the inner heat exchanger proved to be something of a winner in my view however I had a bit of a fancy scheme to try and expand the airflow in the centre duct and thus drop the pressure and cause more oil to condense and precipitate I probably should have known it was a um, a step too far but I tried it anyway and here we have the scene the day the uh, so that's the third prototype got retired for a while so we have fourth prototype about to go into use third prototype and second prototype hanging on the string at this point the only way to tell from the outside is the pattern of the cooling interflow holes the fourth prototype they extend forward in a V-shape, whereas the third prototype, you've got a straight leading edge. So this is possibly one of the maddest of my mad scientist projects, condensing secondhand used two-stroke oil from the exhaust flow of my backup generator. But the figures show before I got sick of it and stopped messing around with it, at least stop counting it, 3.2% um, of the oil that goes in through the carburetor comes out dripping off the bottom of the exhaust canister and a further 1.3% of what goes in the carburetor is being captured by this rig here which looks like that in its large duct using high speed low temperature air exhausted from the engine's cooling system to suck heat out of the metal that's on the inner core of a coaxial airflow and that's where the unburnt two-stroke oil is available for collection as it precipitates onto the relatively cold metal and I don't know about you but I think 
the grandchildren or great grandchildren's generation may just be a little bit happy that this much two stroke oil was stopped from going out into the atmosphere that they have to breathe even though this much was going to dribble out the bottom of the exhaust can anyway due to the design constraints of having a centrifugal cooling fan at a fixed shaft speed with a variable power output and throttle loading. And what does one do with second hand used two stroke oil you may ask? Well my son has suggested using it as bar lube on the chainsaw however it's extremely toxic and carcinogenic because it's been through the combustion chamber and uh, the cleverest thing I can think of to do with it is mix it with a little bit of petrol and paint it on the yellow box timber mounting stumps to prevent it from becoming white ant bait. So that's what I do with second hand used two stroke oil. So that's how Aero Hillbilly Enterprises alternative energy realistic options with the electric pyramid has come to corner the world market in second hand used two stroke oil and at least it's not up there in the atmosphere for the great great grandchildren's generation to have to breathe and uh, yes I did write to the GMC corporation and I did make it known to them that this research was going on but uh, they weren't interested they wound up going bankrupt I think due to market forces around the time of the GFC but if you would like to do this to your own two-stroke generator or any stationary two-stroke motor feel free be my guest adapt the principle go your hardest However much atmospheric carbon you do not emit, uh, emit then that's got to be a good thing. And this doesn't change your fuel burn at all. It just uses energy that was already going to be in the airflow passing and it puts it to some use. Okay, get into it. Second hand use two stroke oil. You've got to be doing it. Because otherwise your own grandchildren and great great grandchildren are going to look back on you and think, well, shit, the hillbillies were smarter than that. You have a nice day. Ciao.